Fluoride is a developmental neurotoxin, along with arsenic, lead, and mercury. The real science has always provided doubts as to the safety and the effectiveness. There's certainly no justification for deliberately adding fluoride to the drinking water. To knowingly, really intentionally, give our population a known neurotoxin, a known endocrine disruptor, every day no longer makes any sense. That's not how we're looking at medicine and health any longer. We're really looking at it more in terms of the fewer toxin exposures in a lifetime, the better. Seven years ago, something was added to this water, added to this town's drinking water. It did something to the teeth, or for them, and the children's teeth just don't have as many cavities anymore. There really was not ever a good study that clearly demonstrated safety and effectiveness. Dr. Kathleen Thiessen is one of the top scientific experts in the world on fluoride. She served as one of 12 committee members for the National Research Council's scientific review of fluoride in 2006. The evidence simply does not support the benefit of water fluoridation. It does support the likelihood of a number of adverse health effects. We can't simply say the science has been settled for 70 years. Don't, don't look at it anymore. That's a cop out. Dr. Harold Hodge, a distinguished toxicologist on the Rochester team. Now, uh, we sometimes say, is fluoride uh, poison? Yes, of course it's a poison, in large doses. We used to think about poisons in terms of dose, but now we also think about them in terms of the timing uh, of exposure. So even a little bit of the poison at a critical time in a child's development can have lifelong negative impacts on that child's brain. Fluoride definitely crosses the placenta. So in actuality, the dose for a fetus that is safe in terms of a neurotoxin is zero. But if a pregnant woman is drinking fluoridated tap water, she's exposing her fetus to quite a bit of fluoride. Fluoride added to water is a drug. If you look at any definition of a drug, a drug is a substance that is used to prevent disease. It's an uncontrolled dosage. Nobody knows exactly how much any individual is getting. Nobody's checking to see if it's working for that individual or if there are any side effects for that individual. So it, it goes against everything we have now about informed consent. That should concern us all because informed consent is a, is a fundamental tenet of ethical medical practice. It's important to understand that community water fluoridation is effective. Approximately 25% reduction in tooth decay. It's safe. On that, I'm not going to give you any percentage because it is absolutely safe. Would you expect the incidence of fluorosis to increase in our community? Yes. Yes, I would expect you would have more children with flex, white flecks on their teeth. I would expect that when you looked at those children, you would think that their teeth were very attractive. According to the CDC's latest data, 41% of children in the U.S. have dental fluorosis. African-American children are disproportionately affected, with 58% having dental fluorosis, as compared to only 36% of Caucasian children. It's an important marker because it tells us that we are overdosing our children with a drug that has significant toxic side effects. We said in the NRC report that fluoride is an endocrine disruptor. It has an adverse effect on normal endocrine function. The normal function of the thyroid hormone doesn't happen, it's reduced. The thyroid is a small butterfly-shaped gland in the neck, regulating our weight, fertility, optimal brain development, and our energy levels. Currently, one in eight U.S. women will develop thyroid disease. So if you are a woman who had thyroid disease, you wouldn't want to be ingesting fluoride. But if you have fluoridated tap water, you would not be able to avoid that unless you bought bottled water or made a conscious decision to, you know, never drink your tap water. There seems to be a huge institutional reluctance to accept that we live in a different world now and that we know a great deal more about fluoride and its risks now than the world of 1950. It makes absolutely no sense to expose our child to yet one more developmental neurotoxin. And I think any mother, if you ask them, would you want your child exposed to any amount of lead or any amount of mercury, 
They, the mother would say, absolutely not. But yet we give fluoride to our children every day. We used to think that fluoride only affects the teeth, but now we know that it has far reaching effects on the body. And if you take these negative health effects and combine that with the fact that we know fluoride acts topically, it really makes no sense to drink our cavity prevention.